Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. For today's video, we're going to be taking an in-depth look into the Lexus GSF. In this review, I'm going to start it up, show the engine, get an exhaust clip, and go over the performance data. I'll also take it for a thorough drive and show you many of the unique aspects throughout the interior as well as exterior. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop on in, start her up, and let her run. Like all Lexus models, the GSF comes standard with smart key entry and push button ignition. To start, just make sure you have the key fob within the interior, then put your foot on the brake and hit the dash mount and button to go. Last year, the fourth generation Lexus GS was treated to its first significant refreshing since its launch back in 2013. Along with a host of exterior and interior changes, two new models were added, including a new entry model, the GS200T, and a new range topping performance halo, the GSF. It shares a lot with the RCF, including its powertrain and its brakes, but the GSF is another beast entirely. It's the new kid on the block, designed to compete against well-established offerings such as the BMW M5, Mercedes E63 AMG, and the Cadillac CTS-V. Like its competitors, the GSF is an exciting blend of track-inspired performance, style, and comfort. One aspect of performance cars I really enjoy delving into is aerodynamics, learning what, where, why, and how engineers did what they did to make air work with the car instead of against it. For starters, all of the bodywork from the A-pillars forward is unique to the GSF. You have a bulging hood covering the V8 engine, exceptionally wide front fenders, and probably one of, if not the most aggressive front fascias in the segment. Lexus's spindle grille has been met with criticism over the years. You either really like it or really hate it. However, most would agree that the GSF's grille seems to match the car's character perfectly, especially with the F-specific meshwork and dark chrome detailing in the carbon fiber lower splitter. Toward the bottom edges of the grille, you find a pair of air inlets that direct a cool stream of air to the front brakes. Beneath the headlamps are another set of ducts, albeit significantly larger, that feed the transmission and engine oil coolers. The front wheels were a particular point of interest when designing this car. Because the tires generated a lot of turbulent air, which subsequently increases drag, special groove-shaped front fender liners were used which allow air to move more freely at the front of the car. On top of that, the aforementioned oil coolers vent into the front wheel wells. To reduce positive pressure buildup, the fenders incorporate large vertical exit vents that help smooth and channel air as it moves down the body. The exterior is just full of detail. A lot of attention was paid to making sure everything was cohesive and creating a sporty profile without being too over the top. The GSF is longer and wider thanks to the fenders and extended front and rear overhangs. It also sits lower to the ground, giving it a more menacing stance. I especially like how the fenders blend into the sculpted rocker panels, creating an undisrupted body line that runs from the top of the fender vents to the rear wheels. Around the greenhouse, the side mirrors and B-pillar trim are covered in glossy, dark-colored metallic paint for added contrast. The underside of the car was optimized for aerodynamics and component cooling as well, including special under trays beneath the engine compartment and various stabilizing fins that help smooth out the flow of air as it travels rearward. Lateral trays beneath the midsection of the car near the rocker panels provide cool air to the rear differential. At the rear, you'll find a rising under tray beneath the rear bumper section, facilitated by fin-shaped elements that serve as a rear diffuser. The rear end follows a similar level of aggression as the rest of the car by adding a downforce generating carbon fiber trunk lid spoiler, functional quad exhaust tips and unique tail lamps, the jet black plated moldings within the lamp unit and on the trunk garnish. Pricing for the 2017 GSF begins at $84,915, and that includes a $975 destination and processing fee. Our tester, as equipped, retails for $87,275, the most significant option being the $1,380 Mark Levinson surround sound system. 
the GSF features an exclusive wheel and tire package, consistent of lightweight forged aluminum wheels and staggered high-performance tires. The wheels are manufactured by BBS for Lexus and measure 19 by 9 inches in front and 19 by 10 inches in the rear. They are wrapped in 255-35 and 275-35 Michelin Pilot Super Sport tires respectively. The wheels come finished in dark graphite as shown here, but for $600 you can opt for the same wheel style but with hand polished accents for added contrast. With this setup, the GSF is able to corner with about 0.95 g of lateral acceleration. The GSF also features an exclusive Brembo brake package that consists of large 15 by 1.3 inch discs in front and 13.6 by 1.1 inch discs in the rear. They are paired with 6 piston and 4 piston monoblock calipers respectively. The orange calipers shown here are a $300 option. The discs are spiral fins slaughtered and internally ventilated, coupled to an upgraded master cylinder and brake booster. Together, the GSF is able to stop from 60 miles an hour in about 106 feet, with a relatively short brake pedal stroke and excellent feel. The 4-channel four 4-sensor four ABS system also provides an added measure of control by including a vertical G-sensor. This allows for change in vertical loads, helping optimize the control of braking force the instant load returns to the tires after jumping a crest. ABS, stability and traction control are all integrated into a single system called Vehicle Dynamics Integrated Management. The most important thing to take away from that is the F-exclusive Sport and Expert modes, which put progressively more control in the driver's hands for spirited driving and track days. The GSF features variable speed sensitive electric power assist and rack and pinion steering that has a very natural and linear behavior to it. Engineers did an excellent job calibrating the power assist curve, making you feel even more connected to the road. A damperless intermediate shaft was added to the steering column to increase rigidity and subsequent responsiveness. It's just as smooth feeling as the RCF I drove a while back, and despite its size, it's quite easy to throw into a corner. The GSF's suspension tuning is unique in that it focuses on reducing unsprung weight and maximizing grip. The chassis also benefits from high rigidity front and rear body braces, including a closed section front brace for added stiffness, a tunnel brace, a trapezoidal brace ahead of the rear wheels, and a rear body brace. Up front you'll find a double wishbone layout with forged aluminum upper and lower control arms as well as unique coil springs, stabilizer bar, and bushings. The multi-link setup out back also features forged aluminum control arms and has increased torsional rigidity over any other GS, along with optimized suspension arm bushings. 2016 GSFs were equipped with responsive ZF SOX shock absorbers, but a new feature for 2017 is Lexus's latest adaptive variable suspension system, which electronically monitors and controls the damping force at all four wheels simultaneously based on road surface conditions and driver preferences. It also includes anti-dive and anti-squat properties. When cornering, it increases damping force in response to steering input, yaw rate, and general vehicle behavior to reduce body roll while maintaining a smooth and surprisingly comfortable ride. This is amplified even further on rougher roads, where the dampers really shine when it comes to reducing vibrations. Powertrain steering feel and suspension behavior can be tailored through four different drive modes, including Eco, Normal, Sport, and Sport Plus. Eco in particular prioritizes fuel economy by reducing throttle response, engine output, and even optimizing the HVAC system. Depending on the mode, the digital tachometer changes its layout. At the heart of the GSF is a potent, naturally aspirated 5 liter V8. This engine is an evolution of the mill that originally powered the now discontinued ISF. With a focus on improved breathing and reducing reciprocating mass, a lot of this engine was either new or significantly redesigned when it was introduced in the 2015 RCF. The block and heads are cast from aluminum, while the valve train consists of dual overhead cams, four valves per cylinder, and dual variable valve timing. Inside you'll also find forged pistons and connecting rods and titanium valves. A stainless steel variable exhaust system with four into two headers augments a two-stage variable intake manifold to further improve breathing and reduce back pressure on demand. Temperatures are kept in check with engine and transmission oil coolers. Fuel is delivered through a combination of direct and port injection depending on performance requirements. The compression ratio is rated at 12.3 to 1 and maximum engine speed is 7,100 RPM. 
the GSF develops 467 horsepower at 7,100 RPM and 389 pound-feet of torque between 4,800 and 5,600 RPM, same as an RCF. This leads to a 0 to 60 time of 4.5 seconds, a quarter mile time of 12.8 seconds, and a top speed of 168 miles per hour. The engine is responsive and lively, it just loves to rev. The GSF doesn't sound like a muscle car, but something more exotic. It's somewhat reminiscent to the LFA with its high-pitched nature. To ensure you're able to enjoy the sound to its fullest and still have a well-insulated cabin, Lexus added active sound control. It's an electronic system that augments the car's natural sounds in Sport and Sport Plus mode and amplifies them throughout the cabin. Power is sent to the rear wheels through an 8-speed automatic transmission and a standard torque vectoring differential. The latter optimizes the transfer of torque between the rear wheels by looking at throttle input, braking, yaw rate, longitudinal and lateral g-force, and more, optimizing control whether the accelerator is pressed or not. It can even be adapted to three distinct driving profiles by a button in the center console. Standard is the default everyday setting. Slalom places additional emphasis on steering response and agility. Track is more for high-speed handling. It all works in the background, seamlessly and flawlessly, helping the GSF deliver a linear response to accelerator input. Placing the transmission into manual locks up the torque converter from 2nd to 8th gear, allowing you to change gears manually via the steering wheel panels or the console shifter. Here, upshifts occur in about 100 milliseconds, accompanied by rev matching downshifts with almost dual clutch like behavior. On top of that, the transmission is adaptive to the way you drive thanks to G-Force Artificial Intelligence Shift Control, which makes a strong case for just letting the transmission do its own thing. The system selects a suitable gear ratio for sporty driving by monitoring the vehicle's G-Sensor while simultaneously tracking the degree of throttle opening. In other words, with greater throttle input, upshifts occur quicker than they would otherwise. It also implements rev matching downshifts. Selecting Sport Plus takes it a step further by automatically downshifting during hard braking for a corner and holding lower gears longer to give the driver greater throttle response on corner exit. As far as fuel economy, EPA estimates range between 16 miles per gallon in the city and 24 miles per gallon on the highway. You can expect the GSF to average around 19 miles per gallon. Lexus recommends the use of 91 octane fuel and it's held within a 17.4 gallon tank. One unique thing about this engine is that it's designed to run in the Atkinson cycle at cruising speeds to help boost fuel economy, similar in concept to the brand's hybrid engines. When more power is needed, it seamlessly switches to the auto cycle. The GSF's interior sports a number of F-exclusive styling touches. Like any other Lexus, the attention to detail is second to none. Only the finest materials were used to create a sumptuous environment, including smooth, perforated leather and plenty of accent stitching. Glossy carbon fiber trim with contrasting metallic dark silver paint can be found on the doors, dash, and center console. On top of that, Alcantara highlights can be found on the instrument cluster, doors, center console, and palm rest. My favorite details are the decorative rivets used to secure the Alcantara to the dashboard. Each is inscripted with the Lexus logo. Build quality, fit, and finish are some of the best in the business. The interior is quiet and refined. Despite all the tech packed into this car, the layout and general feel leans more towards simple elegance. The controls and displays are driver-centric and ergonomically friendly. The F-exclusive front seats are a high-back design with fixed headrests and full power adjustments, including power lumbar and three-person memory for the driver and passenger. The unique sewing pattern and stitching on the seats is claimed to have been placed so that it closely mimics the skeletal and musculature of the human body for a higher degree of comfort and stability. This is especially noticeable on long drives as the possibility of fatigue is greatly reduced. Along with excellent padding, there's pronounced bolstering for the thighs, hips, and lumbar sections, as well as flared upper backrests for added shoulder support and fixed headrests. Heated and cooled front seats are standard. Other F-exclusive bits include the steering wheel, paddle shifters, shift knob, and pedals. The GS offers quite a lot of interior space for this segment, not just for people, but stuff as well. Across the doors, you'll find large pockets, and on the left-hand side of the dash, a pop-out compartment for keeping track of change and other small items. The center console is quite generous and opens up two different ways depending on what you need to get access to. 
It's also where you'll find a USB and auxiliary port, a 12 volt power outlet and a button to turn on and off the front and rear parking sensors. Also in the center console you'll find two cup holders that are also adaptable to different size cups. And of course on the passenger side you have a big glove box that's also locking with a damped lid and a two tier design so you can tuck the owner's manual away. As far as safety, occupants are protected by dual stage front airbags, front knee airbags, front and rear seat mounted side airbags, and full length side curtain airbags. With Lexus Safety System Plus, you also get a pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, high speed dynamic radar cruise control, intelligent high beams, and lane departure alert with steering assist. The GSF comes standard with a 12 speaker 299 watt audio system with AM, FM, HD and Sirius XM satellite radio and an in-dash CD player. Other media options include auxiliary, USB and Bluetooth streaming. Our tester is equipped with the optional Mark Levinson premium surround sound system which develops 836 watts of power through 17 speakers and 7.1 channel architecture, delivering a powerful, crisp and high quality sound over a broader range of frequencies. All of the infotainment features are routed through Lexus's remote touch interface and a 12.3 inch high res display. Hands free telephone, navigation, voice recognition, a backup camera and smartphone app integration are all standard. Now let's go ahead and see if she sounds. Alright, let's go ahead and shut her down. Next, we'll hop in the back seat and check out overall space and amenities. The GS offers one of the nicest back seats in this segment. It's roomy, extremely comfortable, and very well appointed, especially in the GSF. Compared to some of the competition that I've experienced over the last year, this back seat offers a lot more padding and more well-rounded support. There's excellent lower back support and plenty of lateral bolstering. Across the top you have three adjustable headrests. In the middle you have a fold down leather wrapped armrest with a bit of storage up front, a compartment towards the rear and two cup holders. One downside is that the GS's back seat does not fold down. You do have a trunk pass through here so you can stick some longer items up through the middle but you don't have quite the flexibility that you do with some of the competitors that have like 60-40 split rear seats. Lexus does a really good job with creating a very warm and inviting interior. Even with this color scheme and having carbon fiber instead of wood, there's so much padded material everywhere. The doors close with a nice soft feel. It just absolutely coddles you once you're inside. As far as amenities back here, you have LED reading lamps up top, grip handles with coat hooks, storage pockets in the bottom of the seats as well as the lower door panels, not to mention two adjustable air vents in the console and a 12 volt power outlet. So that's pretty much it for back here. Now let's go ahead and hop back out, head towards the rear and check out trunk space. The GS isn't offered with a power operated trunk lid, but it does have a soft closing feature built in. 
Total cargo space is around 14 cubic feet or so. Like I said, if you had some longer items, you can fold down the trunk pass-through in between the rear seats to get a little bit of extra length. There's plenty of ways to secure items as well, not only with a sturdy cargo net, but four cargo tie-downs and another hook up top. Underneath the trunk floor you have a covered well, to the right you have your tire change and equipment, and an additional storage compartment to the left. A first aid kit is also included. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at the Lexus GSF. Be sure to stay tuned next time, leave a like and subscribe today, there's always a lot more where that came from. Take care everyone.